Are you a workaholic? If you're not in your head, this one's probably for you. Let's get right into it. So for the first question from Tomo from Japan, it reads, Hey TRG, I work in tech and I'm slowly becoming a workaholic. <laughs> I know that you all do well. I find myself spending 80 plus hours a week on work and that encompasses my weekends as well. I work through my lunch breaks and it seems like my entire life has been com uh, compromised and consumed by work. My boss contacts me during after hours and weekends. I'm at my wit's end and I think I should quit my job. What should I do? Great question, Tomo. It doesn't really shock me that you work in tech and you're working 80 plus hours a week. Uh, I don't want to say that that's commonplace, but that does definitely happen in tech much more than some of the other industries that I've worked in. I've worked those type of hours uh, through and through the first couple of weeks when I first started the job to get to know things. And uh, sometimes it's just when you're onboarding and sometimes that's just the nature of your industry and your job. It's pretty clear actually that it's really affecting your personal life. Um, you know, not just at home, but everything else that's going on. There really should be a limit to these things unless it's an emergency. And even then, I think the first thing that you really need to do is to talk to your HR department uh, to get some help. Truth be told, some of the things that are clogging up your schedule could probably be offloaded to someone else. You really have to start making an impact and non-impactful list or high impact, low impact list to see what activities you can divvy up to say to yourself, okay, I as Tomo need to do these tasks that are high impact and I can actually delegate some of these tasks to someone else. And the second thing that you need to do is just notify HR that you are facing burnout. That's never a good net benefit for anyone, not the company, not for yourself. Your productivity is going to suffer when you start to try to compound more and more activities and put on more and more responsibility on yourself. So notifying your HR, I think, is really important. And I think the last thing that you need to probably do is talk to your immediate supervisor on how that's affecting you in the most professional manner possible, okay? I know that everyone wants to be a team player. They always want to seem like, hey, I'm capable of doing this. I deserve a promotion, like I deserve more money, and this is the proof why. You know, I don't complain about these activities and I just bring all this productivity to you. But you have to remember that you do have limits just like every other human being. If you're not able to even enjoy a little bit of free time yourself and have a little bit of peace of mind, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna bleed into every other aspect of your life, including work. And I'm willing to bet that your productivity and the work that you produce, the effectiveness that you have on your current job is gonna take a pretty sharp decline if you don't do something. That's some of my tips that I can give you right now. Um, and I hope that helps. Thanks so much for writing in, Tomo, appreciate that. Next question, guys, is from Bethany in Australia, and she writes, quote unquote, Dear TRG, I was recently taken back by some feedback that I received from my employees on an exit interview. They claim that I micromanage them too much. I certainly don't think I'm the type of person, but I can't, can't shake this feeling that they're right. After all, four employees that have recently left the company have cited this as one of the reasons for their departure. I just don't know what to do anymore. Please help. Thanks for writing in, Bethany. Let's try to tackle this one together. Self-reflection, I think, is the number one thing always for any kind of coaching, especially in management, because you're dealing with so many different personalities. When you get some feedback, it's really important that you really try to re-examine your game on where you can improve, okay? Try your best not to be defensive. I know that, I know from personal experience, a lot of this is pride talking and you don't want to think that you're doing a bad job. You're not necessarily doing a bad job. Micromanaging isn't always a bad thing. Um, I personally don't believe in it too much, but there is a time and a place, I think, for all different types of strategies. So the current employee batch that you had, maybe there's some rotten apples there and you had to kind of dig in a little bit and get your hands a little bit dirty. That's kind of understandable as well. The last thing that I want to leave you with, and this is honestly from years of managing people, I am not a micromanager. 
I personally have gone into organizations where the previous person was a micromanager and I absorbed the team and honestly, I manage on a macro level. I usually say to my staff, I really don't care what you guys do as long as you get the job done. And it's nothing that's harming people or illegal or, you know, it's always in the best interest of the company. I really don't care. As long as you're producing numbers, that's fine by me. And you're making the meetings that I'm telling you to make, that's fine by me. So take that for what it's worth. Not everyone is going to agree with that advice. I personally think that you're going to get an immediate result from people and they're going to be scared because they're going to be fearful of their jobs, but that really only lasts so long. Soon enough, people are going to be very resentful for you constantly looking over their shoulder, not empowering them to do the job, not trusting them with the responsibility to do the job and always kind of second guessing everything. A lot of people, when they're micromanaged, actually have the inverse effect of what you want them to have. They plummet in productivity and efficiency, almost out of spite <laughs> of you. I think you need to take a long, hard look in the mirror, Bethany, to see if you're actually doing this. And if you've established some things that you are doing, try to dial it back a little bit and see what that performance looks like. Have a heart to heart with your staff and tell them, hey, look, I apologize for being a micromanager but I'm doing it for these and these and these reasons. If you guys can show me that you are mature enough to take on these responsibilities yourself without me kind of bossing you around, no problem. You know, I'm gonna be hands off. It is a push and pull relationship after all. Thanks so much for the question, Bethany. Hopefully that helps you out get over the situation. I hope that you understand you're not doing a bad job. Keep up the good work. You might just need to dial it down a little bit. Awesome guys. So our third question comes from Ahmed from Dubai. I uh, never had anyone write in from Dubai, so that's really cool. TRG, I need your help. Recently, I've had people close to me mention that I am very negative. I do have a stable job and a good life I have set up for myself, but I do not see myself as negative or being labeled as a complainer. I really don't want to be perceived as being constantly negative. I feel lost, please help. Great question, Ahmed. Thank you so much for writing in. This is a really tough one. Um, I think only you'll know eventually uh, if you are negative or positive. I, I think you really got to start to examine some of the feedback that you're providing for people. So is it coming out in a glass half empty way or a glass half full way? A glass half empty, glass half full, right? The first thing that you gotta really clue into um, and listen to yourself is how are you providing feedback to people or how are you talking to people on your everyday basis? Um, to be completely honest with you, Ahmed, sometimes we don't even know that we're stuck in that. I, I know that you mentioned that you built a good life for yourself, you have a good job. That, that might be totally true and, and perfectly fine, but sometimes we don't know even what's affecting us and how we're spreading that more importantly. So I think standing back and kind of looking at yourself from that you know, thousand foot bird's eye view, you know, on kind of a macro level to see what am I really doing and what am I not doing? Sometimes it's very, very subtle. Sometimes it's actually very obvious except for to yourself. And you're just not gonna know that until you kind of take a step back and, and find out. I think the second thing that you should probably do is ask, ask for feedback from people. If these people are calling you out for being negative and saying, you're always so negative, why are you so negative? You know, if it's your friends and family that's telling you this and they've told you this on a consistent basis throughout like, you know, an ample amount of time or sample size, there's probably something to it. Ask them to cite exactly what examples you're talking about or they're, sorry, they're referring to you. About. So maybe they can cite you in a perfect example and give you evidence as, hey, you said this and you tackled it this way and I really didn't appreciate it because it made me feel like crap, you know? Could you actually say this a little bit nicer this way? So peeling back those layers to kind of understand what the genesis of that is and trying to fix those things little by little, I think goes a long way at the end of the day. So Ahmed, thanks so much for your question. I really appreciate it. I hope those things help you out um, to, you know, get yourself a little bit more on the positive level than the negative level. Hey guys, please let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed today's episode. If you did enjoy today's episode, please also write in 
what your experience has been like with workplace burnout, uh, with negativity, with uh, positive or negative reinforcement or feedback from your employees or other people in your life. Really like to hear how this information might have helped you or your experience as well. And you can comment below, you can email us any questions that you might have for future episodes. It'll be in the description box. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't already, please hit that like, comment, subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for future episodes. We post every Monday or Wednesday and of course every other Friday for Q&A and face-to-face -face episodes. And as always, we're trying to save the world one click at a time. So please share this with someone that you love, you like, that you think this video could help them out. I would really, really appreciate it. And you know, it's a group effort at the end of the day. Thanks so much for watching and see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.